in with Jerry and Mark Jorgensen, and they are from Desert Solace. Uh, it is uh, an addiction recovery facility in St. George, Utah. Beautiful St. George, Utah. It is beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely we gorgeous. It. Is it hot this time of year? Is it still uh, hot? Not Starting. as hot as here. Not as hot as here, which is we. It's <laughs> so it? hot here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but you guys, so you guys are you guys doing an, an addiction treatment program? We've been focusing actually on um, uh, the the sexual addiction aspect of this uh but you guys also do substance abuse as well Mm -hmm. and so and you guys we mentioned during the break uh, that they sometimes uh, if not always go hand in hand well like i said before addiction is about about trying to escape you know addiction is not the problem addiction is the symptom and i say that to people and they look at me like i'm crazy but when you think deeper on that really makes sense because because the problem is whatever you're trying to hide from from your addiction. Uh, the brain sees addiction as a solution. When the brain is stressed and the brain has a problem, the brain wants to escape, the brain is looking for a way out. And, and, and the easy way out, of course, is to grab a substance or grab a behavior or whatever. And, uh, of course, you know, addiction in people, when they think of addiction, they think of drugs and alcohol. And, and that's what people are doing when they use those substances is just trying to escape. And that makes sense to people. People get that. But what is not as commonly known is that it, to, to escape into fantasy and escape into those highs created chemically by the brain from, from a sexual high or sexual rush is, is just as addictive to the brain as the substance is. And so the brain starts to crave that same, same rush. And so... What happens is, is people will recognize, well, I've got a problem with alcohol. I've got a problem with drugs, and they'll may, they'll they'll do what they can to overcome, and they may even go to a to a rehab and, and get over it. Well, if they don't address their primary addiction, they'll just come out and they'll quit doing that. But they'll find another way to escape. They'll find another way to hide. Uh, and so we find that that sex addiction and substance addiction very often co-occur. Now we do primarily focus on sexual addiction. We, we treat people with, the, uh, with that as their primary focus, but of course people that have that will also you know, come with some substance issues too. Not all of them, but, but often. I'd say probably about half of the people we treat also have some sort of a substance issue also. It's probably a snowball effect. I mean, you guys could know, tell me better than anybody, but they probably are addicted to sex and they're like, oh man, I need to stop doing this. I'm going to start drinking. And then and then a snowball right. probably just goes hand in hand. And some of it might be, you know, they may be, you know, you mentioned something earlier about, you know, faith-based and, and oftentimes faith-based people this affects very heavily because a you can't you know i mean it's not they don't go somewhere and buy it it's it's private it's it's very shaming and so it's very very secretive and addiction thrives in secrecy and that's another reason that this this is just exploding is because it's so secret but you know it's it's like whenever someone is faith really faith-based you know they go oh wait a minute oh okay now this this does not really align with what I've been taught or what I've felt or what I've experienced. And so oftentimes because of that, they, you know, are not willing to seek help. But faith-based people are, they're impacted. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you know, what. I mean, it's, I mean, they're all, everyone's impacted. But faith-based people realize there's a, I think there might be a deeper level of shame just because it doesn't align with with what we believe, with who they are. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, there, there's, well, we don't need to get. It. I could I could have used church lingo there, but mm-hmm. uh, it, there's more of a um, less. I don't know how to say o- okayness. Like the the people they go out of their like people in churches for the most part, from what I understand, they they you know they go out of their way to make sure and say, hey, pornography is bad. You know, mm-hmm. sex addiction is bad. Yeah. And premarital well, sex is bad. And we and so, believe, you know, we don't even talk about really bad or good or right or wrong. No. It, it it does not serve them. It doesn't. It's not in alignment with what they want in our lives. And that's why we believe our treatment center is so successful because we're not there just to change their behavior. If we did that. I mean, we could just lock them up in a cabin for you know <laughs> three months and say, okay, you're good. Yeah. But no, it's so much deeper than that. And that's why our treatment center. It just it's a place of miracles, and I see it every day with, with the men that come in. And while we're here, it's, it is for men only. Uh, eventually, we want to start a place for women because, like Mark mentioned, uh, the women are catching up on this pornography and sex addiction thing. They're, it used to be just 
yeah. you know, male thing, and that's not the case anymore. But right now, our facility is for males only, eighteen and up. And so, a lot of these young boys come in, and they maybe just they're just struggling with the pornography. But they might be in treatment with a man in his fifties or sixties or whatever, and where it ha- he has acted out, you know, and, and they're going, oh, I wish I had have gotten treatment when I was your age, you know, but there's never a bad time to get treatment. Yeah. We've treated people in their 70s. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Wow. Uh, Mark and Jerry Jorgensen, we're talking about Desert Solace, uh, and I wanted to talk now about um, maybe the the recovery process. What is your guys's, uh, how do you guys go through so somebody is addicted they've just they have you know they are addicted to this what is your guys's process for getting them through what's the treatment and and getting them through through this addiction okay well of course we're such firm believers in residential treatment is because well a that was my experience and that's what worked for me and i i, I struggled i don't want to disparage outpatient treatment or, th- or individual therapy at all but in in my case it just it just wasn't enough because the pressures of life just would keep getting to me. I had to remove myself. And, and it, now more than ever, especially with you know pornography and sexual addiction, people are being bombarded it, yes. by it. It's, every, it's everywhere. everywhere you go. There's, I mean, right across the street, yes. there's signs all over the place. You know, exactly. and and yeah. you know, it, it's just that people are being bombarded with this. Yes, uh, and so yeah, and, and we, when when they come into treatment, we don't pretend that they're never going to ha- be, have that bombarding again. I mean, and we yeah. we just teach them a healthier way to to, to uh, deal with it. So of course, the the primary idea behind coming to a residential treatment is to remove yourself and to be to detox, if you will, to give that brain time to settle down and just just to be able to to think rationally and just to kind of drift more into the. Uh, into the uh, addiction side of things, uh, uh, they've done. They have done studies on the brain. When a brain is 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 really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Charged up in a sexual rush or whatever. And they've done brain scans on people that are in that state, and and those brains are lit up just like just like someone who's is, getting is, high, who is is as high as a kite yeah. exactly, and. And so that brain needs time to detox from that from that continual stimulation, and there's there's a well I won't go into that. There's a term in the it's a it's a clinical term. It's the, called the hedonic set point. Whereas whereas the 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 level of arousal needed to get to the ne- the amount of stimulation needed to to reach arousal raises and raises and raises. And we talked about that earlier as this addi- addiction escalates. We we want to kind of lower that set point to where the brain is more normal and so that's that's the reason for coming in and uh, and just real quick just the thought that popped into my mind uh i'm seeing documentaries i'm seeing you know news stories all the time uh you're talking about wanting to raise the level of that Mm -hmm. um we're seeing stories all over college campuses about sexual assault like crazy Uh-huh. And so, and to say that, you know, maybe there isn't a relation, but, uh, you know. We believe there is. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Definitely. there might be. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, whether it's military, society, college yeah. campuses, if when they have access to this, and, yeah, it's so unhealthy, and their brains get, you know, just clouded and kind of, you know, crazed, how does it not bleed into their yeah. their life? You know, an addict is often asked when when he's caught or something or or does something really stupid, which usually happens. And someone will ask the addict, "Well, what were you thinking?" And the answer is, "Well, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're really not. You're just and and looking back, you, you as an addict gets healthier, looks back on that that situation, they say, "Yeah, that was that was crazy. Well, I wasn't thinking." And they're not. They're 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 not in their right brain when they're when they're in deep into addiction of any type. Yeah. And so the first step then is of course is just to get that brain calmed down. Lower that level. And and, and remove them, remove the access and just and and then this the second part of the second big factor in residential treatment is to have the structure because idleness and and lack of structure and just uh, free time is is prime green ground. Idle green hands, green. right? Idle hands. Mm-hmm. That old yeah. adage has, has a lot of truth to it. And and people that don't have structure, people that just have a lot of free time on their hands, they're looking for some sort of stimulation, they can take that in a lot of different directions. So we give them a structure, we keep them busy, there's a lot of activities to do. Uh, and uh, of course, we do traditional therapies where we have a chance to to explore well what you know what are you hiding from in life what's going on you know obviously we want to look at the background what's 
what's what sort of traumatic experiences are you dealing with because that's that's a critical part in in addiction is uh, it's always rooted in some sort of trauma and when I say trauma you know we think of horrible awful things that people have had happen to them uh, you know if they were abused or you know physically sexually or whatever and of course that does qualify as trauma but there is little t trauma too they call it uh, you know a, a, my trauma might be I was turned down for the prom or whatever and, and just just have disappointing experiences in life and it's not necessarily the experience itself it's what we decide about ourselves it's what we decide about about life it's what we decide about the world as a result of those experiences and people form beliefs about themselves and about what what that event meant and that's where they start to to uh, take those beliefs and to start to form behaviors from those beliefs. So are you are you guys trying to find out what that T or the little T is? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's, so that's, 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 that's crucial. That's, that's well, we don't that's try the, that. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, happens. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. And is this in an individual setting? Is it a group yes. setting? Yes, both. Uh, both. Oh, both. Okay. Both. both. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep, they do individual and group. They'll okay. do individual and group. And, gr and group sessions are powerful, too, because they're with people that can relate or been where they are. This Again, this is such a shaming thing. And if a guy gets an, a chance to be in... In, in a group with someone who's not going to judge them, they're, they've been where they are, they know what they're experiencing, they know what they're feeling, and it, it lets them uh, learn to make that connection like Jerry talked about. Well, I can connect with this human being, I can relate because, hey, this person's been where I am, and uh, and he knows what I'm going through, and so I feel a little bit more safe to to kind of let my walls down and, and share about what what's happened to and me. And it allows for total honesty and total transparency, which has to happen. And that's something that I feel like with, you know, you guys are talking about that this is a, a shameful addiction. I feel like group therapy, uh, the, that would be the last thing I would want to do, uh, just thinking about it. And, and, but it's actually very, it's very, very, very important. Healthy. It's very important, again, for that connection and to feel, they feel safe. And, and when, when the men come into our center, and they have told me this time and time again, that they immediately felt safe. Now, this is not a spa club yeah. <laughs> yeah this is like work this is and but it's it's a lot of tough work because our therapists are going to ask them to go to places where they don't want to go emotionally and you know where because we're it's that surgery thing we're doing emotional surgery we yeah. are finding out those deep causes and we're rooting them out and presenting them so that they're aware of them and we really stress you know that they live consciously and we talk about that a lot because Addicts don't live consciously. They're totally unconscious. They're, you know, they're just hither, thither, and you know, their triggers hit, and they're yeah. just going to jump. Instant so gratification. It is, and so you know, really living in the present and really living a conscious life is is huge. And and so uh, so the, you you guys start with that. Um, and what, is it a twelve step process? I know that's an addiction. Uh, that's what a lot we are of twelve step based. Okay, yes. so you guys are yes, twelve they step. Do, they step do based. twelve steps, meaning every single day. Okay. Do we want to run through those twelve steps? It seems like kind of well. well the twelve steps we're... have been around for about what eighty years, yeah. I guess, when Bill W. came up with them. And the and of course they're associated with Alcoholics Anonymous, and they have been adapted for different types of addiction. They're pretty much the same. I think the first variation was. Narcotics Anonymous, maybe, and don't don't quote me on that. Okay. But you know, there's Narcotics Anonymous, there's Overeaters Anonymous, there's then there is Sexaholics Anonymous, and there's Sex Addicts. There's there's actually several an, an anonymous twelve step groups just yeah. within sexual addiction. Uh, but 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 the basic concept behind the twelve steps is to recognize that this is something I cannot handle myself, and I need some I need something bigger than myself to overcome this. And they are faith-based. Uh, the original, the original twelve steps says, you know, you turn this, you turn this over to God. Uh, I've known many atheists who have done this, and you know, their higher power. Uh, they've kind of adapted that language of higher power versus God, and that's fine. So whatever your higher power means to you, but, but to some, you know, the higher power may be the group consciousness, and what? I, honestly, I don't get that, but okay, if it works, if for it them, works for that's, you, that's yeah. great. Whatever, whatever, but, but. At any point, at any rate, they're still recognizing that this this is something I can't do by myself, and I have to be completely honest with what's you know what's happening. I have to to uh, I have to to well confess, I guess, for lack of a better word. But you know, taking that out of a religious context, just to to open up and be honest about be what I've done and what be accountable. Thank you mm -hmm. about what what's happened and and be willing to make amends with people I've hurt. 
and to be willing to uh, continue to recognize my faults and to just continue to work on them and to, uh, you know, pay it forward is and basically the last step. And so, you know, that's not, a, that's a very brief rundown of what the 12th step is about, but, but that, that is critical. It, uh, you know, breaking, you know, we're about breaking through that shame piece. And uh, you talked about the groups and people being uh, uneasy doing that. And Jerry says, you know, some people instantly feel safe. Some, some don't, you know, sometimes that takes time. Some come in are very, very guarded. They don't want to share. They are very ashamed of what they've done. They are very embarrassed and that's fine. Just sit in and just, they, they come around as they come to feel that safety and recognize that, hey, these guys are just like me. They've been down the same road that those those walls start to slowly crack and, and they come out. And that's why that's why it's not a one week process. That's why it's a 90 day process, because because you can't that can't just happen in a day or two. Speaking with Mark and Jerry Jorgensen from Desert Solace, you can find more information at DesertSolace.com. One thing you mentioned uh, and a few times um, was, uh, you know, one, it, atheists deal with this. Religious people deal with this. Mm-hmm. Um, some people don't like group settings at first. Some people do. I, how, how individualized are you with each person um, at your facility, and how important is it to be individualized with each person? Well, they're individualized in the sense that everyone's story is different, but it is a program. Um, and that is, that's an important part. Maybe that's hard to understand and, unless you're actually a part of it. But, but being part of a community, maybe, maybe the closest analogy that people might relate to is, is a military boot camp. You know, it's very rigid, it's very structured, and, and, and it's very uh, precise on what is expected of you. And, and it's tailored to, and, and the, the point of that, and the point of our program, now we're not like a boot camp, no, we don't, we're not that brutal, but we are very insistent about, about following the guidelines and following the program and holding the boundaries, because like Jerry mentioned, addicts don't know boundaries. They just see, they, you know, addicts wa- want what they want when they want it, and that's what they do. And so, and so they don't even know what boundaries are. So if they can practice observing boundaries, you know, like, okay, you're going to get up at a certain time, you're going to be at a certain class at a certain time. To some people, that's huge. They're not used to doing that. They just live their life on the fly. And so for someone to have to just inject that much structure into their life can be huge and can be a huge breakthrough for them to, to just overcome uh, this, this, uh, this, life they've they've lived of just taking what i want what i want when i want it does that and, make sense and yeah. they get and they get individual therapy too yeah, yeah. it's not all good they get they get that too so it is you know very personalized to them and they get to experience that group because that community group is critical to recovery all right desertsolace.com for more information uh we got uh, one more break and i wanted to ask you guys just a couple more questions we're gonna have a little short break after this uh how do how do people contact you and uh and maybe we'll mix in some other fun stuff also uh this is the uh, a special desert solace hour on am 1220 khts <laughs> AM 1220 KHT, Ask Your Hometown sta- Station, speaking with uh, Mark and Jerry Jorgensen, and they run Desert Solace, uh, a recovery uh, program in St. George, Utah. You can find out more information by going to DesertSolace.com. Now, it, you know, it's beautiful in St. George, but and you wanted to talk about, you guys are very outdoorsy at, right. at Desert oh, Solace. We take advantage of our fabulous location. Some of the best hiking in the world, in by the, the way, world. in so, southern, in southern yeah, Utah. Our clients hike a lot. And uh, they do yoga twice a week, which is kind of a mind-body spiritual connection that's really, we've just seen amazing results with them doing yoga. Uh, we're on five acres of property right in the backyard of Snow Canyon oh, State beautiful. Park. I don't know if some people may be aware yeah. of that. So they do hike uh, three to four times a week. Uh, we believe we're, we treat the whole person, so we can't treat someone that's not, you know, healthy enough to absorb all the stuff that we're doing. So the physical exercise, the yoga, we have horses on, on property where we do equine therapy. Which for those that aren't really familiar with that, it's all about it's it's horse therapy. It's not necessarily riding the horses. It's having an experiential experience with the animals. They're kind of magical creatures that kind of mirror their anyway it's too crazy (laughs) to explain but it's awesome and so yeah so and we have a chef 
So very nutritious meals, um, because oftentimes a sugar addiction can interfere with recovery. So yeah, so they eat healthy, they exercise every day, and uh, yoga and work with the horses. It's awesome. Very structured, very important. Uh, How do people find out more information? Well, you can go to DesertSolace.com and find out more information. And uh, okay, I'm going to ask you this. What would you say to somebody who, we only have about two minutes here, but what would you guys say to somebody who's dealing with this and wanting to get help? That there is hope. Uh, you know, being st- being trapped in addiction is a very hopeless place. And uh, you know, people often say, "Well, nobody ever dies for this from this addiction." But I'll tell you a very profound story. Uh, very shortly after we opened, I got a call from a mother in Kansas that just wanted to know all about our program and everything. And I says, "Well, do you have a, someone that's struggling, a son or something?" She says, "Well, actually, I just want to find out about this and wonder because my my son committed suicide over this. He just felt so hopeless." And his and uh, it really floored me. I just didn't know what to say to her, and she just wanted to kind of be involved in the cause. And we've we've kind of touched base and talked a little bit since then. And so and so it it is devastating, but there is there is hope and there is help available. And you're not alone. There's a lot of people. This is such an isolating thing. It is such a shaming thing that you think that someone trapped in it thinks they're the only one that's in it in the whole world. And I've been there. I've had that feeling. And until, uh, not until I came out of that shame and admitted it, can can I realize that hey, there's other people struggling, and there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely, there is hope. There is recovery. I've seen it in my own marriage. I've seen it uh, in the lives of so many of the men that we've treated. There is recovery, and recovery is absolutely a joyous place to live. Not only the men you treated, but also in their families as well. Oh yeah, and yeah, we communicate. Often and yeah. Thank you guys for coming in. I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Uh, DesertSolace.com for more information. Mark and Jerry Jorgensen, go check it out again. DesertSolace.com. Learn more about them over there in beautiful St. George, Utah, actually, right? Just a quick drive up to 15. It's right? only five hours yeah, away. It's a quick dr- and you lose an hour. So it's, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys again Thanks, for coming Kyle. in, and it's always good to see you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle.